whose idea was the megaphone? When did it happen? And tell us about it. Well, it happened the first year I got strep throat after the invasion. No, it was, it was just because it suddenly, you people here in the Pines started to greet us and wanted to know who everybody was. So as they were getting off the boat, at some point I started announcing everybody who got off the boat. This is so-and-so, and this is our queen. And everybody would complain that they couldn't hear what we were saying. So we got a megaphone just so that you could. And when that wasn't enough, Thanks to the FAPOA, we suddenly now have a sound system. I don't know how long it's been, but uh, it's been for quite some time now. But. Thank you. During the 80s and the advent of the AIDS crisis, how did the invasion change? And tell us about that. Well, the 80s was it was certainly a, a decade none of us will forget, and uh, or the 90s, which followed up on the 80s, where all the damage really came through. But um, it, we, it, it didn't change the invasion. Because what the invasion became in the beginning was, yes, it was a fuck you to John White, and we still make fun about it, but really, really what it was, was just a day of silliness and camp, and inter-community fun, and us coming over here and having fun, and you coming over there. And I made an early decision that the invasion would have nothing to do with the arts project, with the FAPOA, with our property owners association, with any political organization, that it would just be a day of camp in and of itself. Then when the AIDS crisis came along, people wanted the invasion to become a fundraiser for GMHC. And when I said no, I was criticized by very many people, but, um, and believe me, it was heart-wrenching for me to think about, but I stuck by my guns and said, the invasion is one day out of the year when none of us have to worry about anything. It's the day we come out and we be ourselves and we just have a really good time. We don't have to raise money for the politicians. We don't have to raise money for this. We don't have to raise consciousness. Just one day, let's forget everything. Forget all our differences and just go out and have one party. And to be honest with you, I think that added to the invasion because the invasion just became a wonderful party day for everybody. Yes, the invasion changed in some respect because as our many of our Many of our girls were wearing smaller dresses because they weighed 80 pounds. Um, when people were coming with their IVs, it, it proved that the invasion was a day to prove that people were living with AIDS and they weren't dying from AIDS. The invasion was a day that people came out and were able to have fun regardless of who they were. It was heart-wrenching at first and shocking to some people, but I think it added to our community in the Grove to show that just because you had HIV or AIDS back in the 80s was not a death sentence and you weren't supposed to stay home and hide, you were supposed to come out and live. So the invasion became a part.
totally, <laughs> the community in and of itself welcomed us from day one, otherwise there wouldn't have been a second invasion. It was a party right off. And every year we came, right? It was always fun. And the um, uh, predecessor to Sip and Twirl was an island club. When they opened up, they opened up their bar to all the girls to come in and have a free drink. So in that respect, it was, um, it was accepted right along. However, there were two individuals who didn't appreciate the pines, um, uh, to, who didn't appreciate the invasion, and that was uh, the president of the property owners, your property owners at that time. What was his name? Mr. Brockman, I think, Alan Brockman, and John White. Both of them were, from what I understand, very much against the invasion, and uh, John White did everything he could to stop it, from what I understand, from this end and from that end. And, he used to have people calling me, threatening me, not threatening me, my life or anything like that, but you know, these nasty phone calls with you, ruining my business. Well, so what do you mean ruining your business? People are paying $200 to sit there and drink and watch. But anyway, for some reason, it was, it was just a constant battle, but to be honest with you, that just fueled my fury and I was more and more determined not to stop. Not that I would have, but, and then it was, and I don't even know what year, suddenly John White, started to, um, uh, money started flowing in, <laughs> I heard someone say. <laughs> uh, John White suddenly decided to greet us one year and he came to the dock to greet me and that was a big ceremony where we made believe we liked each other and kissed and, uh, oh, yeah! <laughs> Actually, we became very good friends over the years, but uh, that was the mid-90s when all that changed. And then the uh, Fapoa joined in. I'm not sure at what point it, 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 it they did. I know there was probably some vaccine stuff that went on keeping this community clean from the invasion. As more and more people were coming, it was becoming problematic on both sides. Um, but then Fapoa started uh, enhancing the day by making it safer over here and finally allowing the boats to dock at the big dock at one point. I think that was a big momentous occasion because we used to kind of stop over here and on the side and walk to the community. So it's sort of transitional, it sort of went on over time. I never thought this was going to become anything. If I knew what I knew, I would have written books and written down dates and years and pictures. But I'll wait for the biography channel. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the wildest outfit, the wildest incident that all any of you can remember. Should we start with the twins? Too many? All right, you narrow it down. All right, Pansy. I think the most controversial was when Orangina came on a donkey. I warned her when, you, when it comes to religion, no matter what it is, there's a there's a very fine line of humor and insulting people. And uh, while many people thought it was absolutely fabulous, just as many people uh, sort of just ignored her. So it was sort of a you know a mix. But for me, it was one of the most outrageous seeing a donkey on the boat. God knows we have a lot of assholes on the boat, but, it was, but for once we had a donkey. Um, our Gina, I think over the years, has had some of the most outrageous of the costumes. We all know our Gina, how wonderful she is. And she's always bigger and bigger than life. I think um, uh, Drag Repair was, has always been a very, very big hit and uh, always will be. It's a big part. And thank God for the hairspray on the boat. Rose, anybody else? Well, there was some, I don't know his name, but he was uh, you, remember? And I wouldn't let him on the boat. But no, but he was painted. His whole body was painted. And his... And his yes, the elephant man. man. Right, right, right. <laughs> and his trunk. Yes. We didn't let him on the boat. But he got over here anyway. And he met us over here, yes. Yeah, that was, I don't know, that even pushed my buttons. I don't know, maybe, I mean, maybe if he was 20, I would have let him, but he was about 65. <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> Mona Lisa. Oh, the Mona, remember the Mona Lisa? That was antique of the Imperial Court of New York. That was one of, one of the, 
one of the most momentous when Miss Wing had the picture of the, of the Mona Lisa and stuck her face through it. And um, you might be seeing that at the end of the end of the uh, season in the Grove. And in recent years, the Ice Palace has done where all of their people come in, in a theme. It's like 22 people all representing different, like ripped from the headlines. You know, when they, they portray the tabloid people, whoever, but you're supposed to, I go, am I supposed to know who you are? That's what I'm, I'm, well, that's something, here's something that I find amazing at the Ice Palace. You know the Ice Palace is filled with personalities between Ariel and Logan and Portia and stuff, but on the day of the invasion, none of them have a personality. They all do a group and they all meld in. I find that actually amazing because they're all full of themselves, you know, usually. <laughs> But their biggest uh, event was when they all came as the First Ladies. And they came from Abigail Adams down to Martha Washington to Jackie O with a pink, she had a pink suit on with red blood on it. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, and, uh, but that was one of the most momentous. Uh, my favorite story was uh, Ingrid Bergman came on the invasion once. For real. Isabella Rossellini, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had the right family. Isabella Rossellini came on the invasion one year because she's uh, related to Demi Cass. And she dressed as a little sailor and painted a mustache on. And when I was introducing everybody, I said, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Isabella Rossellini. And they went, oh. <laughs> No, really, it's Isabella Rosalini. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just another dyke from the ground. That's all. That I'll never forget. I just posted a picture yesterday. One of my, uh, two of my favorites are the Mona Lisa, which I thought was just so creative and so incredible. Uh, also, the uh, Annie holding the sign up that says your son will come out tomorrow. 